Howdy folks, and welcome to The Daily Coin. My name is Rory, and today is Wednesday, February the 22nd, 2017, and it is my great honor to welcome back to the show the president of First Mining Finance, Mr. Patrick Donnelly, and you can find uh, First Mining Finance listed on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol uh, FF.V, and you can find them on the Frankfurt uh, Stock Exchange under the symbol FFMGF. Patrick, welcome back welcome to the back. show. Thanks for having me back, Rory. The first question that I want to ask you about is what is First Mining Finance's greatest asset, and why would you say that? Oh, that's a really good question because we have a number of high quality assets. But um, if I were to name one, um, I would probably say it would be our Spring Pole project, uh, which, which is located in northern Ontario. And why we like Spring Pole a lot is simply, um, you know, it's one of the largest gold deposits in North America. Um, it hosts, um, you know, five and a half million ounces of gold. Most of that's an indicated category. Um, it already has an economic study done on it. Uh, that was completed in 2013, and it was it was, it was positive. Uh, matter of fact, it would you know the project would likely make money at current uh, metal prices, and so um, we feel it's probably more, our most advanced project. It's the largest project, and um, we um, on I think uh, February 6, I think it was, uh, we put out a, a press release on um, <clears throat> on some assay results. Uh, uh, for um, we did a we did a metallurgical drilling program last uh, fall, and uh, we also assayed the core, and um, and it just confirmed, you know, the previous drilling where we were pulling out you know 300 meter holes of over a gram uh, of gold, wow. and so um, and the market seemed to like it, and I think it just re, you know it just um, you know uh, reconfirmed that this is a you know a very large high quality asset. And uh, we're redoing the economic study, and and hopefully we'll have some news on that um, in the middle of the year. That sounds great. That sounds like a, a, a really uh, super high quality asset that you guys have there. And uh, I want to ask you about Alan Greenspan. I'm sure that sure. you have read about Alan Greenspan coming out, making another case for returning to the gold standard. And yes. I don't think that the fiat currency manipulators would allow it to happen. That's just where I, that's my personal opinion. And what are your thoughts about returning to a gold standard? Well, you know, I think we're headed in that direction. I mean, uh, we're seeing so much manipulation, you know, uh, in the U.S. dollar. Um, you know, you, you see the, the, the Fed, you know, playing around with interest rates and, and and um, getting away from what the true intrinsic value is of the dollar, and not only the U.S. dollar, you know, other currencies, you know, you know, the Chinese are notorious for for manipulating, manipulating their currency, and 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 the euro, you know, nobody trusts the euro anymore with all the noise going on in Europe, and um, you know, we've seen a number of scandals with manipulation of, of foreign exchange rates. So, um, how do we? You know how do we protect our currency right from from these people and and I think um, you know the traditional way is to is to link it to to gold. So uh, I'm fully in favor of that because um, there's so many shenanigans going on, um, especially now with all the technology that's out there with you know digital systems and and algorithms and there's so many ways to manipulate currencies and be very difficult um, to to uncover these. So um, so absolutely, I think uh, I think we need to to to, to peg gold, uh, peg the dollar to gold and other currencies, um, so that you know uh, we're not being duped by by all these manipulators. Exactly, and duped we are being. That's for sure. And would you see uh, silver playing a role in in a gold standard as well, like what we had before? I mean, silver's been. Money. I wouldn't see why not. I mean, historically, silver has also been used as a currency. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say, and there's a, you know, the historical connection between gold and silver and, and the fact that silver has been used as a currency, I, I wouldn't, you know, wh why not? So, um, you know, and silver is also a fantastic store of value and, 
And um, and so, yeah, I think I make, if you're going to use gold, why why wouldn't you use silver as well? And, and uh, um, going forward to, to protect your protect your uh, um, your wealth. Yeah, because they're stealing it at every turn. I mean, it's just gotten to the point to where every single day there, it seems like there's a, a new story where a, a piece of our wealth has been hijacked. And this is to say nothing of the deficit spending that the U.S. federal government does every single day, every moment of every day. So, and that's nothing more than a wealth transfer. The Federal Reserve System is nothing more than a, a mechanism for a transfer of wealth. So, in my yeah. opinion, getting back to a gold standard with silver as money as well, because silver's been money longer than, than gold, I think sure. is the only way that we can protect ourselves and as far as uh, economically. I mean, do you think yeah, that there I, would... I, go ahead. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And, and, you know, you know, for, you know, the problem is, you know, governments t like to take these shortcuts, you know, the Europeans are doing it and the Japanese and the U.S. are doing it, taking these shortcuts where, you know, their central banks are manipulating uh, interest rates to prop up the currencies and uh, or devalue the currencies when what's really needed is is whole scale structural changes um, you know, you know, for example, you know, revamping things such as regulations or taxes or those sorts of things. And, and I, I liken, you know, the, the federal reserve and all these groups to like, you know, you know, you, you lose your arm, your arm, you, you know, your arm or your hand gets cut off. And instead of, you know, doing surgery to, to reattach it or fix it, um, they're, they're giving you heroin. And, and so, yeah, you don't, you know, your arm is still missing, but at least you're not feeling the pain. And, I think that's exactly what what the, these federal bank these federal reserves are doing. These, these central banks are, you know, simply just sticking morphine into the economy so you don't feel the pain. But when you look under the surface, there, you know, you're still missing a, an arm or a leg because the government hasn't had the courage um, or the foresight to to enact appropriate structural changes to, that that would re result in long term uh, growth in the economy and and stability in the currencies. But if you listen to the mainstream media, everything's great. I mean, it's nothing but rainbows and unicorns as far as the eye can see. You know, housing market yeah. is up. Everybody's making money. Everybody's employed. Is that not true? Well, you look, just have to look at below the surface. I mean, look at, <laughs> um, you know, stu student loan debt is greater than credit card debt in the U.S. And yep. it's at a historical level. Um, you know, you look at the state of Illinois with the unfunded pension liabilities. And how high that is, that's in the billions of dollars. And they're, they're never going to meet their, their obligations. And, you know, you look at uh, Europe and, and, and the United States, which with their federal debt levels, you look at Italy, France, um, you know, Spain, you know, you look what happened with Greece, you know, everyone's freaking out about Greece and Greece is just a drop in the bucket. Um, you know, if, if, you know, France has been racking up their debt for years. And and uh, the government there is gutless. They've never made any structural changes. There's always the same clowns that are in government there, and they're having another election now. And and uh, you know I I don't you know if you look at any of the leaders who are running the French election, they're all a bunch of clowns. Um, so you know it's it's, it's systemic. You know um, you know Japan has a huge amount of debt, and yet it's popul it's going to get worse because its population is aging, and so the the the, the you know, the government's going to be under a lot more duress to to support this aging population, yet has no young people. So, you know, there it's all everything is you know starting you know everything is starting to come come to the surface now, and 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 that's going to catch up. That's going to catch up with all of us, and 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 therefore it's going to have a huge effect on your wealth and huge effect on currencies, and and so you know. You need to get, we need to find lifeboats and, yep. and, and the best lifeboat out there is gold and silver. Yep. And speaking of uh, lifeboats outside of the precious metal space, uh, Pat, with physical gold and silver, along with the mining stocks, I mean, what do people need to know about protecting their wealth or what, what are you doing in, the, in this time of what you just described? I mean, that's just great turmoil. I mean, what are you doing to protect your family's wealth. I mean, if you don't mind giving us a little insight. Sure. 
Yeah, I mean, I I, I invest, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I'm an investor in, in my own company, First Money Finance. Um, you know, uh, I do buy a lot of silver personally, a lot of physical silver. Um, you know, my wife loves silver. So, you know, she keeps telling me, um, you know, if you ever see silver, buy it. And I'm like, no problem. So, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm frequently down in Mexico and I'm always you know, scooping up lots of silver. So, yeah, I, you know, I'm investing in gold and silver stocks, physical silver, uh, those sorts of things. And, um, just to, just to protect myself, you know, um, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, you, you gotta, you know, in times like this, you gotta go back to the old fashioned ways and the old fashioned ways are, are physical gold and, 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 and gold equities that have, that are torqued to have great leverage, uh, to precious metals and, and first money finance, my company is highly torqued, you know, our, our, yep. I think our correlation to gold is well over 0.9. So, um, you know, that's how I protect my wealth. And, and that's part of the reason why I'm, I'm doing this. And makes perfect sense to me. And where does uh, first mining finance set at this point? I know you all have entered into at least one venture with uh, Silver One. Are there yes. other opportunities first mining is pursuing at this point? And would you mind, uh, Pat, sure. just giving us a quick update? Yeah, I mean, so... Uh, you know, there's been a number of changes in the markets uh, since last summer. You know, as you're well aware, uh, Rory, we were, you know, on this aggressive acquisition mode where we did eight transactions in a period of just over a year. And now we have, you know, 7 million ounces of measured indicated gold and 5 million ounces of inferred gold. Um, you know, we were wanted, we want to get up to 20 million ounces total. Um, obviously, you know, since last summer, we've seen valuations go up. We've seen liquidity come back into the market. Um, and, and we've seen capital come back into the market with respect to mining equity, gold mining equities. Um, so it's gotten much harder to do deals. Um, we did raise, um, $27 million Canadian last summer. And so, you know, we've transitioned a little bit. We're now, you know, it's getting harder to do deals. So, but what we are seeing is that the markets are rewarding companies for putting money back into the ground. So, you know, we've, we've uh, approved a $10 million budget for 2017 for exploration development. So we're going to advance some of our assets. We're not going to put them in production, but we will advance them through drilling, economic studies, resource estimates, and, and show the market exactly what we have. And, you know, I remember when we first spoke, I don't know how long, how long ago it was, Rory, it was a while ago. You know, one of my mottos was it was cheaper to buy ounces than to drill for ounces. And I think now we're in an environment now where it's actually cheaper to drill for ounces than to buy ounces. So, you know, we're gonna we're gonna enhance our assets. We're gonna we're gonna de-risk them. We're gonna move them forward. Um, long term, you know, the goal is, you know, we did this deal with you know Silver One um, as a one-off. But you know, down the road when we see you know when we're further along in the gold cycle and we see valuations increase, you know, then we'll do de- other similar deals like we do with Silver One where. You know, we would do deal, do deals with other parties, other mining companies, other groups. They put the assets in the production, and we hold on to residual interest. So, in the form of royalty streams, joint ventures, what have you. Um, but at this point, you know, we want to we want to show the market what we have. You know, we want to we want to enhance these assets. We want to add value. Um, you know, in terms of acquisitions, would we like to do more deals? Absolutely. Um, but we're not. We're pretty disciplined. We're not going to overpay. Um, valuations are much higher now than they were, you know, seven or eight months ago. Um, but, um, you know, we like to get the 20 million ounces, but only if, uh, you know, the right deal comes along. So we're not going to overpay. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to, you know, uh, undermine, uh, uh, our shareholders and, and, and we're going to remain disciplined. So, so that's, that's kind of the strategy we have uh, at this point. Well, I like it. And, and I've always been a huge fan of your of the business model that is uh, first mining finance and the fact that you're taking it taking a, a, another step as far as developing the mines out just to the next the, the, the next level, if you will, so that you can actually show people say, hey, this is this is what we have just pulled out of the ground. Here's a 43101 for you to take a look at. There it is. We told you that's what was there. Now we can show you that it's there. And that should, I would think that that would take the company right up to the next level. So I, I love it. I think it's, I think it's really cool. And, uh, 
some of these topics that I'm about to list, we you just uh, fired on, but uh, infrastructure sure. spending, Fed fund interest rate hikes, strong dollar, weak dollar, geopolitical issues all across the globe. China is a currency manipulator. The list just goes on and on, Pat. Sure. I mean, none of these issues have a quick fix, so we will be living with them for the next little while. On the flip side of all of this, and you mentioned this also, we have the criminal COMEX and LBMA rigged precious metals market, apparently keeping the price of gold and silver in check. I mean, yep. that's what they're that's what they're doing. I mean, they're not allowing yep. either to run their natural course. I mean, what impact over the next few years as our world continues down this path of self destruction? Well, I mean, you know, the, the you know, in China, people, you know, China's got its own significant issues, and and you're seeing that because there's such there's so much capital flight happening uh, out of that country. And and now the government there is enacting even stricter capital controls uh, on 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 the uh, Chinese currency. So, you know, you're seeing a lot more demand in China um, for gold because uh, people in China are very very concerned about you know what's going on there. Um, you know, you know that the you know the the Chinese economy has been slowing down for a little while, and 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 people are worried that. Uh, that, that there could be some, you know, significant uh, 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 tremors or earthquakes uh, coming down the road in that country uh, with regards to, you know, uh, their debt situation and and um, and, and the slow down the economy. So, um, so abs- you know, there, there's 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 already there's already huge demand for gold in China, and I expect that to uh, continue to increase. And specifically, uh, physical gold and and uh, you know which which reminds me, you know, um, the, the other thing that, that people don't realize is that, uh, you know, uh, you know, miners, uh, mining companies are, are not, uh, produ- you know, they're, they're, they're running out of gold, yep. uh, physical gold in terms of reserves and resources. And, and we're starting to see that come along. There hasn't been any major discoveries in a number of years now. And, and mining companies until recently were trying to stay alive and keep their heads above water. And so they weren't reinvesting in their assets or acquiring new assets or doing explorations. So um, we're, we're going to see a crunch. And, and, and meanwhile, um, you know, demand is, like you said, demand is going to continue to increase um, from China. I was just in Europe um, a few weeks ago in Eastern Europe and um, doing marketing. And I never thought I'd ever be marketing, you know, in Eastern Europe. And I met a number of large funds in Eastern Europe, you know, government funds, in Eastern Europe, and they're terrified. They're absolutely terrified of what's going on there. They think Europe is a basket case, and they're getting ready for it. And they're loading up on gold and gold equities. And um, I was really taken aback how concerned they are. And they're not even thinking about the United States. They're not even thinking about China. They're thinking about what's going on in, in, in the euro and what's going on in, in, in France and Italy and Spain and all these other countries. And, and you know, if we see a Fran- you know, if we see Marine Le Pen get in in France, and she decides to leave the euro. You know, look out. You know, we're we're you know you you think things are scary right now in the euro. If France decides to leave. Um, you know, then we're and, and it isolates itself. Um, we're going to see some major. You know, it, you know it's it's going to create a lot of turmoil, and 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 that's going to be very good for gold. So you know the the Eastern Europeans. Uh, these are sophi- these are sophisticated people. These are people. These 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 people running these funds in Eastern Europe. A lot of them. Or U.S. educated, they went to good schools in the U.S. Like you know, they went to to the best MBA schools and business schools in the United States, and 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 they're very smart people, and and they're getting ready, they're battening down the hatches to protect, you know, the the wealth of their the, of their workers uh, in, in in Eastern Europe. So um, it, it's a theme that I've run across. Where you know, I travel a lot, I go all over the world, and it's a theme that I keep coming across wherever I go. Just not here. Just not in the in the in the so-called uh, developed world. It's more so in countries that have an appreciation and respect and understanding of gold and gold as money and silver and silver as money. They understand this. It's been part of their culture for hundreds of years. Absolutely, and, I totally agree with that. Yeah, and, you're absolutely bang on. Absolutely. 
Well, and, and the brainwashing that we've experienced in regards to, uh, you know, these dollars or these uh, Canadian dollars or these euros, these are, these are wonderful. These work. They work beautifully. Yeah, they work beautifully for the criminals that are stealing our wealth, but not so much for the citizens. And that's what, that's the, one of the main differences is that the people, like you said, in Eastern Europe and in Asia, they understand this. They understand that they have to have gold in order to protect themselves from mm -hmm. the government theft. They know that. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at what happened mm -hmm. in India, you know, when uh, Modi woke up one morning and had this great idea that he would, you know, get rid of the 500 and 1,000 rupee. I mean, it's yeah. like, uh, hello, that's 86% of their currency. So now yeah. everybody's without currency. And speaking of which, this is the last question, Pat, and then I'll let you get back to your sure. morning. Cashless society seems to be on a steady course to fruition. What are your thoughts on the cryptocurrencies? And as, as an aside, how would a cashless society impact gold and silver? Well, you know, we, we go to a cashless society, you know, it, um, you know, it's a way for the, for the government to, 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 you know, to steal wealth from, from the individuals, right? They want to yep. be able to track every single little thing, uh, that you own so they can tax it so they can, they can keep fueling their, their spending spree. So, um, so, you know, you, you're moving down that road, um, you know, then, then, the, you know, how, how do, how do regular people, uh, protect themselves, how to protect their, their wealth. And then again, it's going into the physical assets, right? It's going into, you know, uh, you know, physical gold ETFs, um, um, gold equities, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, it's like big brother. It's, it's, it's yeah. like, uh, you know, what George, or you know, in the, the book 1984, George Orwell, where, where, where the government, you know, is trying to control everything. And, and move us into a cashless society so they can know every single thing that we do. And, and it's frightening. It, it's highly frightening that, that we're, we're heading that direction. And, and that's why we're, you know, you're seeing government trying to manipulate gold and, 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 and try to control it because they see it as a rival to their currencies. But, you know, um, you know, if the gold, if the whole world is moving towards gold, um, then, then the government's going to be very difficult for the governments to, to, to continue to manipulate it. Eventually it's going to come, uh, come to a head. So, um, but it, that's a very frightening proposition that, that, that we're moving towards, uh, moving towards this where, uh, everything is done electronically and, and the government's going to have more control over people's wallets and, and not only that, their privacy and, and, and their lives and, yep. and, uh, you know, we, people have to think about how to protect themselves by having physical assets. Yes. I mean, privacy would be completely eviscerated and, and any thought of a sovereign individual gone out the window completely. Absolutely. You, have, Absolutely. you have no rights. And from my perspective, the cashless society is directly tied to the, the so-called negative interest rate policy or NERP because if, if they have, if they force like what they're trying to do in India, force everybody into the banking system and yep. there is no physical cash, it's all digital, then they can say, well, we're going to now implement a half percent um, tax. We'll call it a fee, but it's really a tax on any amount of money that you have on a monthly mm -hmm. basis in your account. And then they sure. just steadily increase, steadily increase. It goes from a half sure. to three quarters to one to one and a quarter, whatever they want to do. And once yep. again, like you said, privacy completely gone. You know, it, it, it's the whole thing is disgusting. I mean, do you think that that gold and silver would flourish in that environment? I mean, oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, uh, how do you how do you step out? How do you isolate yourself or step out um, of that system and, and and protect your wealth? And and that's by going into the hard assets. You know the old, you know the the traditional uh, way uh, of protecting your wealth. Um, you mentioned the Europeans. You know the Europeans. Uh, you know I go to like I said I go to Germany and, and Switzerland and Eastern Europe a lot. And and uh, historically, you know they've gone through. 
you know, th- a couple thousand years of a lot of turmoil. And how do they protect themselves by by you know by having uh, physical gold uh, uh, to protect themselves? And 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 so that you know to, to protect your, to protect your own wealth uh, uh, from these governments who are going rogue. Um, you, you got to have physical gold or gold equities or ETFs or other ways to, to uh, um, have exposure to gold and silver and precious metals. And, and because otherwise you're going to get sucked up into the system and the government's just, as you mentioned, the government's just going to continue to erode your, erode your wealth. So, um, so I think, yeah, we're, we're, I think we're going into a new golden age for gold, pardon the pun, um, given that, you know, uh, people are going to be, you know, people in, in, in Asia and, and Europe and, and, and other places are, are, are going to want to protect their wealth. And there's not too many avenues to do that. And the one way you can, though, is, is, is by, by putting your money into gold. Couldn't agree more. Transfer every fiat uh, piece of fiat currency you have as yep. much as you can, as quick as you can, into a physical asset like gold, silver, diamonds, those types of things. Absolutely. I love it. Well, Pat, I certainly appreciate all your time this morning. And we've been speaking with the president of First Mining Finance, Mr. Patrick Donnelly. Pat, if you don't mind, tell them how they can get in touch with you. Maybe if somebody's got a question or two for you. Sure. Yeah, they can, uh, you know, uh, we have, you know, our website is uh, www dot first mining finance dot com or you know they can email me directly you know I like talking to our shareholders and potential shareholders so they can email me at Patrick at first mining finance dot com. Sounds great. And I'll put the uh that information in the description below the video. Sure. And uh Pat, I certainly appreciate it and I look forward to speaking with you in the not too distant future. Well, again, uh, it's good talking again, Rory, and thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to, to tell our story. Thank you. Okay.